Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it's like to be a programmer, software developer. Um, I've been a developer since about 1999, so it's coming on 17 years. I've worked mainly in the St. Louis, Missouri area, Chicago, even Atlanta. I've worked as a consultant. I've worked as a full-time employee. I've worked as a contractor. Different times for different needs. Um, there's so much to tell you about being a programmer that I'm going to have to break this up into a series because what's going to kill me is I'm going to tell you some things in this video and then later I'm going to be like, man, I should have said that. I should have said that. So this is just going to be step one. What it's like to be a programmer, what the work is like. Do you want to do it? I'm going to give you some food for thought and you need to really think long and hard about whether you want to do it or if your personality type fits it. Because in retrospect, I wish I had picked something maybe with a little more activity to it. Because one thing I, that one of the most biggest things that I first realized, first job right out of college, is that it is a sitting job. And I know that sounds obvious, but when you, no one really tells you that and no one prepares you for that until you get your first job. And then they say, here's your cubicle. Sit down. It's eight o'clock. You can leave at five. And it, that's when it hits you. Oh my God, I just signed up for a desk job, which is not just one or two or three hours, but it's eight hours a day, five, to five times a week. Now, there's ways to combat that and there's ways to deal with that and you get used to it. I do a lot. I get up a lot. I get up and walk at least once an hour. Um, it's good for your eyes. And I'm going to talk about this in other videos too, but I always get up and I move around and it's not healthy to sit for that long and it's not healthy for your mind or your eyes. So anyway, it, you can manage it. That's my point. But you need to realize before you become a programmer, this is a sitting job and there's lots and lots of sitting, which makes it also easy to gain weight. So I've had to, I've had to struggle with staying thin because I like to run and bike. I've had to struggle stay, staying thin because it's a desk job. All right, now, it's not all bad, of course. A lot of people get into it for the money. And at first, too, when I was in college, I, had, I was making zero. So when I first heard that you can make 30, 40,000 right out of college, I was like, wow, sign me up. You know, 30,000 sounded like a lot back then. And it was, if you manage your money right. And so um, this, this is a big mistake to pick it for the money. Um, you need to make sure you like what you're doing, first of all. It is programming. You are going to be solving problems. And we, I'm going to get into that too, but I just wanted to say right off the bat, if you're doing it just for the money, but you kind of don't like it, you kind of don't like to figure out problems all day, I'm going to tell you, you need to maybe think about doing something else or doing it, just doing it on the side. Okay, so... What kind of things does it take to be a good programmer? All right, here's the first problem I had in college. I thought you had to have a lot of math, mathematics. And I'm gonna get, I can give a big long speech about this. Do you need to know math to be a programmer? And the answer is no. You don't need to be a math scientist to do programming. They're actually quite different things. Programming is logic. It's step by step. First you do this, then you do that, then you do this. But you can't do this until you do that. It's like doing a Sudoku puzzle. Have you ever done a Sudoku puzzle? It's very much like that. When you start figuring out the numbers, and then you figure out these numbers, and you realize it has to be this or this, it's very much like that. If I was going to tell anybody how to train their brain to be like a programmer, I would say go out and do a bunch of Sudoku puzzles and things like that. Logic puzzles. They have entire books called logic puzzles. And that's the kind of mind and the kind of thing that you need to like to do to be a programmer. Because you're going to be taking real world problems and converting them into software solutions. So you have to know how to take all this junk the user gives you, which may not be really good information, and you have to turn it around and make it so that they can get something they, they can use. So. You have to be good at that and you have to like to do that. So another thing you need to think about is a lot of the, 
they didn't ever told me in college how sort of strict or the guidelines of your programming are very they're very strict in general and I'm talking about big corporations I'm not talking about startups and places that are very laid back Silicon Valley I'm talking about your average big corporation which that's where I worked I worked in the big corporations um, so what what it is and what the way I pictured it I pictured it kind of like the movies like things would be different and changing and you'd be I thought there'd be a lot more movement and a lot more creativity the reality though is that every place I went looked almost exactly the same every place looked the same they all had cubicle 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 every place worked at probably 40 different companies as a consultant as a contractor every one of them you wouldn't know one business to the next what they even do because they all look the same on the inside it's not like if you work for a rental car company which I did I worked for dollar rent a car it's not like you knew that because you, you went to the building and it had cubicles if you work for insurance which I did you go in the building and it has cubicles so you don't you're so disconnected from the business that you don't even know what they do half the time so you go into the business and they isolate what you do down to very narrow specifics so 99% of the time you have no idea what the company does you're just working on this one little piece that somebody else gave you especially as a contractor so you're working on this website that has business logic in it and has database logic in it and you're sitting in a cubicle but it might be you might be selling cereal or you might be in an oil company you might be working for insurance but it doesn't matter because you're still sitting in a cubicle and then the, the other thing I realized is everything I built everything is just it's the kind of the same over and over and over it's a form users enter data into the form the form gets gets some logic built into it coding and it goes into a database and then they write reports on it that's 99% of everything you're ever gonna do form logic database reports once you start seeing that pattern and you learn the code HTML is the form web web form uh, business logic is C sharp code or C code or C++ uh, database SQL Server uh, MS SQL uh, DB2 reports crystal reports or some other reporting tool now I'm greatly simpl simplifying things of course there's a lot more to it than that but what it's like to work as a programmer usually <coughs> <coughs> what I didn't excuse me what I didn't know was how standardized it was I, I thought there'd be a lot more creativity usually you're given so much so much rules and everything that you build something that's advanced planned in advance and so you have to be okay with that 